Hey guys, Austin Payton from Recluse Motorsports down here at Upshift Garage. We're doing an install today on a 2021 TE300i. We're going to be installing a Radius CX, which is our premium auto clutch for this motorcycle. Uh, one of our top selling SKUs. So excited to show you this install step by step. The Recluse Radius CX kit comes with everything needed to replace the internals of your clutch. So like I said, this is our top of the line product. So it's going to come with a full billet pressure plate, hub, a whole clutch pack with the EXP disc, which is the auto disc, a billet clutch cover, a billet slave cylinder, and the rest of the hardware needed for the install. Additionally, there's a manual to walk you through all the steps. We'll be doing the install video step by step, but it's always good to review your manual to make sure that the install goes accordingly for your model. For the install of the Radius CX, we will be using general tools that you should have in your toolbox. Some notable items that we will need is a T25 and a 27 millimeter uh, socket, uh, torque wrenches, and then an additional tool that Recluse offers is a clutch holding tool. That'll help us set torque for the center clutch nut. For the actual list of tools needed, they're in the manual on page four. Before we start our install, we're gonna put our clutch back and our EXP in a bag and then add some engine oil. For the install, we recommend using Recluse oil or a Jasso MA2 rated oil. First off, we're gonna lay the bike on its side. And what that'll do is allow us to install the clutch system without having to drain the oil. First thing we're gonna do is remove the return spring for the brake. And then to get the rest of the way out of our, out of our way of removing the clutch cover, we're gonna go ahead and remove the eight millimeter that holds the pedal on and it'll fall out of our way. Next, we're gonna remove the clutch cover by removing the eight millimeter bolts. Once they're loose, I like to pull them out of the clutch cover. And we'll set these aside and we will reuse these with the installation of the recluse clutch cover. We will begin disassembling the OEM clutch system. First, we're gonna take off this uh, spring ring, eight millimeter again. This will be under pressure, so as you get to the last one, you'll notice the ring will start to come out towards you. Be careful not to drop a bolt into your engine. Pull these out again. I'll just kind of slide off. We'll set that aside. We'll be reusing these components. We'll continue to remove the slider ring out of the OEM pressure plate, followed by the pressure plate itself. Notice the drive plate came out with it. Next, we'll remove the throw out. And we'll grab our hammer and we'll loosen the lock tab washer. To remove the lock tab washer, what we're gonna do is use our chisel to knock this tab back carefully. So if I can stop shaking. After knocking the lock tab washers back, we're gonna use our 27 millimeter to loosen the center clutch nut. It's helpful to have the bike into top gear to help this come loose. Additionally, also using an impact will help with this step. Removing the OEM nut for the first time, you'll notice there's Loctite, so removing this can be a little bit difficult. Now that the center clutch nut is loose, we're actually able to pull the entire clutch system out of the motorcycle. 
As we pull it out, make sure we take note that this thrust washer is still in place between the hub and the basket. We've taken the stock clutch out of the bike and set it onto the bench. We're gonna disassemble the stock clutch here on the bench. So first we're gonna take off the clutch pack and we're gonna set that aside. We'll not be reusing the stock clutch pack. Uh, we'll take out the pins. The clutch pins will be reused with the recluse clutch system. And then the next step is to actually take this hub apart. On the DDS style clutches, which is the 300, the two strokes, and even the 500s, the dampers are in this center hub. So if you flip it over and put some pressure on the center of the inner hub, it'll come apart. Inside that, there's six dampers that sit in this hub. The inner hub dampers are really important to inspect. On a new motorcycle like this one, we can reuse these dampers. On a motorcycle that has a lot of time on it, a lot of times these will be cracked. Uh, the rubber itself will get brittle and hard. Using damaged dampers will cause accelerated wear to your clutch system and your drivetrain. If you get to this step and you notice that your dampers are worn out, Recluse does offer a replacement damper that's proven great durability and actually enhances the damping function of the inner hub. We will begin assembling the Recluse center hub. We will be reusing the OEM damper plate and the OEM dampers on this bike as the dampers are brand new. When you install the dampers, you'll notice that there is a connecting piece of rubber that will go in and down into the farthest corner of the hub. We'll continue to install the rest of the dampers, so there's six total. After the dampers are installed, we'll go ahead and install the damper plate. Please note that these dampers have a slot in between them, and so it can be a little bit difficult to get this mounted in, so you may have to work it a little bit. Um, generally, kind of rocking it back and forth will get you there. Um, apply a little bit of pressure. And if you get to a point where it doesn't seem to want to go, go ahead and start over and make sure that you have all the gaps opened up on this hub. With brand new dampers, this step can be a little bit difficult. To verify it's installed, you'll want to make sure that this is all the way flush. As you can see, our damper plate is not quite flush with the hub, so we need to continue to work this damper plate down. If you continue to have issues with getting this damper plate into this hub, it's okay to use a rubber mallet uh, to seat it the rest of the way in. Now you can see our damper plate is now flush with the inner surface of this hub. It's very important on these DDS style clutches, which basically means the bevel spring style clutches, to measure the clutch pack. And in the manual on the back page, there's a setup sheet that will walk you through the measurement and then the setting on the spring ring that should be used with that measurement. Now we've taken our fiber and our EXP out of the oil and we're going to stack it with the steel frictions and EXP disc to measure our clutch pack thickness. Our measurement is 1.34, so we'll now reference our setup sheet to see what spring setting we need. Now we're back over at the bike. We're going to begin our install of the Recluse Radius CX. The first step is to install the hub. Once again, make sure that this thrust washer is in place against the basket. After the hub's on, go ahead and install the lock washer and we'll go ahead and just hand tighten the center clutch nut. Once again, it can be a little difficult because there's a little bit of Loctite on there. All right, next we're gonna install the clutch pins into the hub. Once again, be careful not to drop one of these into the transmission, otherwise you're gonna be going fishing with a magnet. Once the clutch pins are installed, we're gonna use our recluse clutch holding tool to locate on the pins and then into the basket. That'll allow us to set the center clutch nut torque 
to 50 foot-pounds. As you can see, when I took the tool off, one of the pins did fall down. So just use a magnet, grab that guy, and we'll go ahead and replace it in the center clutch hub. Now that our center clutch nut is torqued, we're gonna bend up the tabs on the lock tab washer using a set of channel locks. This will help with this process. I'm gonna make sure to bend up both tabs. As you can see, our Loctite washer ended up on one of the points of the nut. So just wanna make sure that you bend it around as tight as you can to the nut. Um, and sometimes that may take a couple tries to get it bent to the right angle. Usually on these KTMs or Husqvarna's, you'll find that scenario. We're going to begin installing our recluse clutch pack. You'll notice that these tech plates have a wave pattern to them. Uh, we kind of talk about this as a shark fin. So the shark fin at the top of the clutch is going to swim towards the back of the motorcycle. So you'll install your dry plates in this orientation all the way down. After the first dry plates installed, we'll continue with recluse friction plates. Followed by the rest of the steels and fibers. Another important note is that there's some half slots in these Husqvarna or KTM baskets. You want to make sure that the friction is oriented and going down into the correct tab. You want to maintain alternating between frictions and steels all the way up. The last item that we're going to install in the clutch pack is going to be a steel and then our EXP unit will go in. And there you go. I tried to put it in the wrong slot and it won't even go. And to finalize the clutch pack install on the Radius CX, we're gonna go ahead and install the Recluse EXP. The Recluse Auto Disc, or the EXP, doesn't have an orientation up or down, so either way is just fine. After a clutch pack's installed, make sure you reinstall your OEM throwout. And then we're ready to install the pressure plate. On the pressure plate, there's a lining plate that sits on the back side here. It indexes into these slots on the back side of the pressure plate. So you want to hold that together and then set it down onto the clutch pack. We're going to start installing our spring. Uh, we're going to reuse this slider ring that sits into the pressure plate. You'll notice that this does have a top and a bottom. Uh, very, very lightly engraved on the top. There's a word that says either up or top. Um, you wanna make sure that that's facing up. It's also got a rounded edge. Um, so the rounded edge should be also facing up. There's a sharper square edge that will be going down into the pressure plate. Now that our spring slider ring is installed, we'll install our bevel spring. This is the OEM bevel spring. We're going to install it this way with the orientation basically cup side down. This orientation with cup side up is incorrect. You want to make sure you're installing it cup side down. After this is installed, just kind of hold it in place. And we're going to go ahead and install our spring ring. The OEM spring ring has three settings, a one, a two, and a three. We're going to basically be lining these up with the bolts into the center hub. The setting one, two, or three is based off of the clutch pack thickness. It also adds or takes away spring force to the clutch pack. Earlier, we measured our clutch pack and we will be using setting number two based on the thickness of the clutch pack and the specifications given, a, given to us by the Recluse tech sheet. Now, once you have it lined up, go ahead and install one of your bolts to hold everything in place. The bolts included with this kit are a T25. Uh, they're a lower profile bolt do not reuse your eight millimeter bolts that are in this location on the stock clutch as they will hit the clutch cover.
Now that we have our bolts started, we're going to align this spring as centered as we can on the slider ring. So you notice that on the edge here. And then it's important in this step to just take your time and go ahead and take it down by hand. Um, using an impact, you know, obviously it's quicker, uh, but can cause some damage. Once we get these tightened down, we'll go ahead and set torque. It's good to go in a star pattern as well to make sure that you're installing this evenly. Continuing our star pattern, we'll go ahead and snug these bolts up before torquing. Now we're going to set torque to 55 inch pounds and using the same star pattern method. We're going to remove the gasket, the rubber gasket, out of the OEM clutch cover because we'll reuse this with the recluse cover. So use a pick and you can kind of loosen it up, and it'll pop out. I'll set that in the recluse cover and then we're going to also reuse the oil plug. Make sure your O-ring's in place. We're going to reinstall the oil plug into the recluse clutch cover. And then install the OEM gasket into the clutch cover. If your gasket uh, is the first time taking your OEM clutch cover off, you should be good to reuse this OEM gasket. Um, the gaskets on these Huskies and KTMs are actually really resilient. They're a good gasket. So it's fairly rare when you need to replace these. Now the gasket's installed into the recluse clutch cover. We're gonna go ahead and install the cover onto the engine cases. And we're gonna reuse our OEM clutch cover bolts to install the cover. You'll notice that there's different lengths of these bolts. Um, on this cover in particular, there's two different sizes. So just go ahead and kind of play around with the bolts until you find the right thickness um, sticking out of the clutch cover. Ultimately, the thickness of the head or the distance between the head and the cover should be the same all the way around. Now that our bolts are in the cases, I'm gonna use an impact carefully just to take them down to snug. Now that we snugged up our clutch cover bolts on this clutch cover, we're going to go ahead and torque them down to 10 newton meters or 7 inch pounds. And same thing, we'll do a star pattern on this as well. Lastly, before we stand the bike up or finish the install the brake pedal, just make sure that your oil plug is nice and tight. Uh, there's even maybe a little bit of a gap there, but it's still going to be sealed with the O-ring down there. To reinstall our return spring, go ahead and use a neat pair of needle nose pliers, and then stretch them up into the clutch cover hole here. It's designed for holding that return spring. Once the spring's installed, go ahead and reinstall our uh, brake, the rest of our brake assembly, with this eight millimeter. Once again, on this eight millimeter, the torque will be 10 newton meters or seven inch pounds. Before we take apart our OEM slave cylinder, I like to bleed out the recluse slave cylinder. Uh, one nice feature is this has the adjustment on it, so that moves the piston back and forth. Uh, so basically you can almost completely bleed this um, by hand. So I'm gonna add some brake fluid. And then start working the piston in and you'll kind of see some bubbles start popping out. And just kind of rotate it back and forth until you get all the air out of that slave cylinder. You want to make sure not to go too far. There's an O-ring on this adjustment. Uh, there's actually two of them. Uh, showing a little bit of rubber is fine, but you don't want to go any farther than that. Now, for the average guy, it's going to take a couple times of filling this up with fluid as you work the air bubbles out of it. That's completely normal. 
Um, the important part is to make sure you get all the air out. So basically when you get to the end, you should be able to rotate this up and down. And in this chamber, you should no longer see any air bubbles popping up. Also be careful not to go too far and pull more air into the system. All right, looks like all of our air bubbles are out. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside and start taking apart our OEM slave cylinder. A nice place to store this after it's been bled is in the foot peg as it keeps it nice and upright and ready to install onto the motorcycle. To start taking off the slave cylinder, we're gonna loosen the banjo bolt here at the top of the slave cylinder. There's a 10 millimeter. You'll see a little bit of fluid leaking. That's okay. We're gonna re-bleed that system. Once that's loose, we'll go ahead and start removing the bolts. I like to start with the chain guard. So this is an eight millimeter. I'm gonna pull this one all the way out. And set the pull to the side and then we can move this kind of out of our way. I'm gonna take off the bottom two bolts of the slave cylinder and that will bring it free from the engine. You may get just a drip of oil coming out as you take this off. Now you'll notice on the OEM slave cylinder that there's an O-ring in the housing and an O-ring over the piston. The recluse slave cylinder will include this O-ring so we will not reuse this. And the recluse piston uses a dual O-ring inside the slave cylinder housing so this will not be reused either. We'll continue to remove the banjo bolt out of the clutch line to finish removing the OEM slave cylinder. We'll reinstall the banjo bolt using the recluse crush washers. One goes on top and one will go on the bottom of the clutch line. Now we can start to install the recluse slave cylinder. The recluse slave cylinder will include a, include a paper gasket, so we'll go ahead and install that paper gasket onto the housing. Now holding it in place, we'll start our threads of the banjo bolt, making sure that both crush washers are in their correct locations. And once you kind of get it started, go ahead and place it onto the engine. Once again, make sure your gasket's lined up correctly. And then start with your two bottom bolts that hold the slave cylinder to the case. Once those are started, go ahead and bring down your chain guard. Once the chain guard's in place, go ahead and reinstall your OEM bolt and washer into the same location here. Now with all three bolts installed, we're gonna go ahead and start with kind of like a star pattern to bring it down evenly into the cases. So just basically bring it down snug and then work your way down to the lower bolts. You may kind of have to push the chain guard out of the way to get to gain access to this bottom bolt. Torque on these bolts is 10 newton meters or seven inch pounds. Now that our slave cylinder is mounted to the cases, we'll go ahead and tighten down our banjo bolt in the clutch line. Now holding some pressure on the brake line, go ahead and finish snugging this bolt up. I hold pressure on the clutch line to make sure that we keep the line out of harm's way from debris or a broken chain. Keep it nice and tight to the engine cases or cylinder here. So we're gonna start bleeding the clutch system out. 
Uh, we want to make sure that this reservoir is flush. That'll make it easy to add fluid. So bring it up, just kind of tighten that into place. And then we'll remove these T20 bolts that hold the cap on. Now the modern Maguras, they use brake fluid. So DOT four or 5.1 brake fluid. Go ahead and set the cap aside. When you start bleeding, you wanna hold pressure on the lever and crack the banjo bolt bleed screw. Tighten the banjo bolt bleed screw and then you wanna pump the lever up. Continue this practice, adding brake fluid as needed until all the air bubbles stop coming down below. All right, so we'll crack the bleed nipple on this banjo bolt to six millimeter. Today we only have sockets, so we will make this work. So once it's loose, I'm gonna push through on the clutch lever then hold the clutch lever down and re-tighten this down. I pump the clutch lever, add fluid as needed, and it may take a few bleeds to get all the air bubbles out. Hold again, crack, continue to hold, tighten, It's also helpful to use the included line uh, to watch your air bubbles come out of the slave cylinder housing. After bleeding the system, replace the cap. Make sure that the fluid is full. You may get just a little bit of overflow as you install the cap and bladder. That's normal. That lets you know that it's full. Use your T20 and go ahead and secure down the cap. Lastly, double check that your bleed nipple is tightened. Good pressure and then replace the cap. Next, we're gonna set our adjustment for the clutch system. So this is done by using this adjuster. You'll notice that on the housing, there's tick marks. Then on the adjustment bolt, there's also a tick mark. These are gonna be used for reference. Now to start our adjustment, we wanna find our, our starting point. Uh, initially, you wanna make sure that this center adjuster is nice and loose, so it's free. Should have zero resistance on it and we're gonna go in until we start to feel some resistance. That resistance is gonna be our starting point. You wanna make sure you're using your fingertips. You don't wanna be using a lot of pressure to find your starting point. And I like to work it back and forth two or three times until you can be real confident that your starting point is in the location that it's falling. And usually it'll fall into that same location multiple times. So I found my starting point. I'm gonna to continue to turn the adjuster in one full turn and two additional tick marks. One, two. Now this setting will not be our final setting, but it's our good, a good setting to check our free play gain and we'll make adjustments after we fire up the motorcycle. So we'll go ahead and fire the motorcycle up and what we're gonna check for is free play gain. So to show you, I'm gonna pull through just the regular free play in the stock system now, when the motorcycle is fired up, we're going to hold pressure basically as all the slack is pulled out of this lever. And as we rev the motorcycle, the lever is actually going to come in. And what that is, is just showing the expansion of the pressure plate. And this is how you double check your adjustment. We're looking for about an eighth of an inch of movement at the handlebar lever. As you can see, we have a little over an eighth of an inch. So we're gonna go back down to our adjuster and we're gonna go in one more tick mark and then recheck free play gain. Made our adjustment down at the slave cylinder. We were initially at one full turn and two tick marks. We're now at one full turn and three tick marks and we're gonna recheck our movement at the lever. That's about perfect. That's right, somewhere in between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch of free play gain. 
So we were set good. So our adjustment is one full turn and three tick marks. That's it for this Husqvarna 300i. This install is very similar on a lot of KTM 250 and 300 models, as well as 450, 500, four-stroke KTM Husqvarna models. Maintenance on your Recluse clutch system on your Radius CX. So we set our adjustment after finding our free play gain. That one full turn and three tick marks gave us the correct free play gain up here at the handlebar. After your first ride or second ride, you want to double check and make sure that your adjustment's still good. Um, and in fact, it's a good idea to double check your free play gain, your movement at the lever, basically before any ride. You can quickly make your adjustment down at the slave cylinder. And what I would recommend doing is just reset it completely. Go ahead and back it all the way out to your starting point, go a full turn, the two tick marks, and then make an adjustment so you have a, an eighth of an inch of free play gain. Now that our clutch is installed, we set our free play gain, there's a couple more things I wanna to touch on. So any Recluse auto clutch system has some additional springs to come in a hardware kit like this. And what they're designed to do is change the EXP engagement and the RPM, specifically the RPM. Clutch slip, things like that are all done and adjusted with the slave cylinder and free play gain. So it's very important that free play gain is set correctly before you make any tuning adjustments. Now, that being said, the EXP will come with a standard setting from Recluse to match somewhat of an OEM style idle. If you're a guy that likes to modify your idle up or down, you may need to adjust the EXP springs to match that. Uh, this is an also important step to be noted because this is where the freewheel and some of those other characteristics um, that are not uh, usually positive things with the Recluse system come out. So basically what we're looking for is just a little bit of drag on the, train, on the chain when you're sitting in gear. Um, and your bike basically as soon as you start giving it some throttle will start to engage immediately. If there's any gap in that engagement, that's where the freewheel starts to come in and you need to go back in and make an adjustment to your EXP springs. Additionally, we touched on it briefly during the install, oil is really important. We recommend a Jasso MA2 oil for our Recluse products. We also offer a, a line of oil, it's a fully synthetic, specifically designed for clutch systems and for Recluse clutch systems. For more information about tuning, you can check it out at recluse.com. We do have some tuning videos based around the EXP bases and those small springs like I just touched on. For more information, stay tuned for some more upshift videos or check out recluse.com.